Hey there, you know that chronic fatigue you've been experiencing? That's burnout. Those uncontrollable emotions at the office. Yep, also burnout. The mental exhaustion for even the most routine activities. Ladies, this is burnout. Your body is sounding the alarm. It's time to pay attention and do something about it. But what? I've put together a live one-hour webinar on May 15th at 12 p.m. Eastern that will give you the tools you need to start living a less chaotic life. Tangible strategies that you can implement today to replenish your energy without having to quit your job or give up your business. Head over to karenfreeland.com forward slash burnout and claim your spot today. There's no cost to attend. It's my free gift to you. I want to help you show up calm, confident, and collected in every facet of your life. No more burnout. Visit karenfreeland.com forward slash burnout right now to learn more and sign up. Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, the show for high-achieving career women who refuse to settle for mediocrity and aren't afraid to take bold action. This is a place where you can authentically show up, where every dream and goal can be validated and achieved. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life reinvention coach, speaker, and award-winning author. I'm here to give you the tips, tools, and strategies to help you shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take meaningful actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready to go from stuck to thriving? Let's go. Hey, ladies, and welcome back. I am all over this burnout topic lately because I keep speaking with so many women, women who are shutting down their business, who are letting their goals slide or go by the wayside, who are quitting corporate and who are missing out on their best life. And I don't want that to be you. Now, If you're like, wait a second, Karen, don't you specifically help women get out of corporate? Yes, I do. But here's the thing. There's a difference between being in a job and making an empowered and informed decision that this is no longer for you and being in a job and being so drained that the only way you see out is to just give up, quit, leave, run away. Okay. Those are two very different scenarios. And I want everyone who listens to this show and everyone that I work with to be in the empowered camp. There's nothing wrong with shutting down your business. If you have felt like you have done everything, it's you tried it, it's not for you, your season of life has changed, it served you for a while, now it's not, and you make this really empowered decision to close up shop, I I will support that all day long. What I don't support is the women who are half trying, who feel like they should be further along than they are, and so they must not be any good, and they are just giving up, okay? They're quitting before they really give it the full run or the full try. Again, totally different, right? Those are two different scenarios. And so many people are doing this. They're giving up. They're quitting corporate. They're leaving their businesses. They're just ignoring their goals because of burnout. They just don't have the energy to keep going. Now, there's a number of ways that you can cure burnout, okay? And I'm going to be sharing a lot of those on May 15th in my Banish Burnout webinar. So if you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? KarenFreeland.com forward slash burnout. But today, I want to specifically focus on the role that fitness can play in your life, and in helping you bounce back from burnout. I'm going to give you five ways that fitness can help you do this. Now, I want to also caveat that I'm not really talking about fitness from a perspective of weight loss. I'm talking about it from a perspective of physical activity and the importance that movement and being active plays in your overall well-being and specifically in combating burnout. So this isn't like a diet podcast. You know, I'm not telling you how to drop LBs. Although when you do physically get active, you will probably drop some LBs or at least tone up, right? And be feeling better and loving how you look. 
But really, that's not the purpose of this, right? Like the purpose of what I'm talking about with fitness is, I'm going to give you the five ways, is how it can play a role in helping you overcome and bounce back from burnout or avoid getting there in the first place. So I love those of you that are tuning in and you're like, yeah, yeah, I I, I don't want to get to burnout. Like I'm not there yet, Karen. How do I avoid it? So whatever camp you're in, there's something for you today. But anytime you can be proactive, that is like the best, right? Be proactive. Don't wait until burnout becomes an issue. All right. So the first way that fitness is going to help you is with stress reduction. It turns out that engaging in regular physical activity, whether that's cardio, like running or yoga or a kickboxing class, whatever, whatever you enjoy doing for physical activity can help reduce stress levels by releasing endorphins. Those are our natural mood lifters. And when you have those endorphins kicking in, it helps to reduce the level of your body's stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. So that is a huge, huge benefit. And when you have less adrenaline and less cortisol in your body and you have more endorphins, that's going to help alleviate those feelings of anxiety and tension that contribute to burnout. It's great. I love working out for this reason, right? It has always been one of my go-to stress reduction tools. I remember when I was chief of staff back in 2016, I would always go to the gym during lunch. We had a gym on campus at our office. And so in my previous role, before I became chief of staff, that was my thing. Like I would work the morning. I would go down to the gym around 12, 1230, depending on when I had calls in my day. And then I would come back to my desk and finish out my day. And it was a great way to get rid of all the stress from the morning and then look at everything for the afternoon with a fresh set of eyes. Well, once I became chief of staff, that all went out the window. I think I tried to go to the gym about four times in the first couple of weeks. And every time I went down, I would get called up to the president's office and I'd be quickly like stripping off my gym clothes and my sports bra and like shoving my regular clothes back on. And I'm trying to hightail it up to his office in my heels and my pencil skirt. And I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. So I just stopped working out. And let me tell you, by about end of March, beginning, because I started in January, end of March, beginning of April, I was toast. I was ready to quit. I was calling in favors, like, can you move me into a different role? I don't think I can do this. And what I realized is that my outlet for stress had been removed from my life. I had no way to work out. So I was talking to my husband about this, and he was like, I've been wanting to get a Bowflex Max trainer. Like, let's just do it. Let's invest and get ourselves something we can work out on at home. And we did. And it was the best money we ever spent. I still have it to this day. I use it all the time. And that is how we ensure that we have a stress-reducing mechanism. Now, you don't have to get a piece of expensive equipment, okay? You don't have to go buy a fancy Peloton. Don't buy it unless you're going to really use it. There are so many online things you can do now. I just go to YouTube and do like 20 minutes Pilates class, whatever, but find your outlet. Maybe for you, it's taking a three-mile walk with the dog or going on a hike. I mean, this isn't a one-size-fits-all. I'm just using that example to show you that I didn't have a stress reducer. Like I didn't have something, I didn't have an outlet for all that stress. And without that, that anxiety and that tension that was going on at work just kept building up, building up, building up to the point where I thought, I just can't handle this. Like I, I, I just need an out. But what I really needed was to work out so I could let those emotions and all that stress go. So if you're not working out regularly, you don't have some sort of physical activity, get it because this is going to help reduce the stress that is contributing to your burnout. Okay, the second way fitness is going to help you is improved sleep quality. And I know it's so ironic because you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but I'm so tired, Karen. I want to sleep more. I don't want to wake up and work out. <laughs> well, exercise is actually going to promote better sleep quality. 
because it helps regulate your sleep patterns and it promotes more relaxation. So when you work out, you sleep better. And quality of sleep, it's not just quantity of sleep. I think we talked about this on the last episode, quality over quantity. It's not just quantity of sleep. It's the quality of sleep you're getting, which is crucial for that overall well-being and the resilience against burnout. We got to be resilient because burnout, it takes a toll, right? We got to be able to bounce back, jump back up. How do we do that? Better rest, better quality rest. And for some of you, I mean, I know for me, if you're lying awake in bed and you're having trouble falling asleep, you might be replaying your day, right? Like, oh, this is what happened today. This happened. Oh my gosh, I just forgot. I got to do this. I didn't do that. And all of this stuff is just like running through your head. Two things. One, exercise is going to help reduce that stress. So it's going to become easier and easier to fall asleep. Like you will actually fall asleep faster. And the second thing is have a notebook by your bed. I keep a notebook by my bed. And if I remember something, I just write it down. That way I don't forget it. And I'm not trying to stay up and remember that thing. You can do the same thing. You just grab out your little notebook. Don't worry if you have a partner, they'll get used to it. Mine did. First couple times, he's like, what are you doing? (laughs) I'm writing something down. I don't want to forget. I don't really recommend keeping your phone by your bed because I think that's a whole other sleep disruptor. But if you do sleep with your phone by your bed, put it in your calendar, in your notes section, something that's going to remind you in the morning, oh, I got to do that thing. But if you just don't write it down or you don't have a way to capture that thought, you're just going to keep laying there awake and trying to remember that thing so you don't forget it. Now, some of us, (laughs) me, I'm going through perimenopause. If you are going through perimenopause or full-blown menopause right now, then you might have the pain of that 4 and 5 a.m. wake up. So if you can get better rest by working out, right, and avoid this double whammy, right, the bad sleep from the burnout and the bad sleep from menopause, you put the exercise in your calendar. Like, why would you not add this to your daily routine if it's going to help improve your sleep? Exercise, exercise, exercise. Okay, number three, boosting your energy levels. I mean, that's one of the chronic symptoms of burnout, right? It's just low energy, fatigue. Regular exercise increases your energy levels and reduces fatigue by improving your cardiovascular health and circulation. That's going to help combat some of that lethargic feeling and the exhaustion that comes along with burnout. Not to mention, here we go earbuds if you have little ones listening with you, but maybe, I mean, maybe you're open, depends on how little they are or how big they are, I guess. But boosted energy levels also means more energy for sex. Yeah, that's a good thing. And that's usually what gets neglected when you're burnt out. Like no one comes home from work and is completely burnt out and is like, well, I can't wait to hop in the sack tonight. Let's stay up an extra hour and have sex. (laughs) That doesn't happen. So if you can get your energy levels up, you're going to have more energy for sex, which, oh, by the way, is a form of exercise. Yeah. So you can get your fitness in while you're doing the thing. It's like perfect. They go hand in hand. And of course, more energy, more sex, more connection with your partner, more endorphins and all those dopamine feel good mood lifters are going to be coursing through your body. And again, less cortisol and stress hormone and all that kind of stuff, right? So this all just goes hand in hand. It fits together. Okay. So now that you've got more energy levels, number four, you're also going to have enhanced mental well-being. It's no secret that physical activity has been linked to improved mental health. It's also helping to reduce a lot of those symptoms of depression and anxiety. Exercise is going to give you that healthy outlet. Remember healthy, we need healthy outlets, not drinking, not drugs, not sleeping pills, not all the things, right, that society says, oh, this is an easy way to self-medicate. No, no, we want a healthy outlet for stress and handling those negative emotions. This is going to lead to a more positive mindset 
And again, you'll be more resilient when faced with burnout. I know for me, I see a lot, like I have those really strong emotions. Like when I get angry or I'm really pissed off, that doesn't really happen anymore. It just, it happened a lot in corporate, but it doesn't really happen a lot in my life now as a coach. But when it does, my favorite thing to do is go for a run. Like that is the best outlet for me to just get all of my emotions out, sort through my mental state, like all the feelings, all the things. And then I get back and I just feel so good. My outlook on life completely changes, right? Like you feel so good physically. You feel good mentally. Yeah. I mean, what more can I say? Just having that regular fitness in your life. And again, if you're like, Karen, I hate running. I don't want to run. You don't have to run. Take a dance class. Go to a yoga class. Learn fencing. I don't know. Whatever. I think I used that example on another show too. (laughs) Whatever your hobbies are. It doesn't have to be what people typically think of as exercise. I don't know. I like try to come up with interesting things every time and my mind just goes blank. But you know what you enjoy doing? Go do it. Kayaking. I don't know. Something like that, right? Like find a way to fit that stuff in. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Number five. The fifth way that fitness is going to help you bounce back from burnout is you're actually going to have improved self-esteem and confidence. When you begin to achieve those fitness goals, whether it's, I don't know, improving endurance, your strength, your flexibility, you're going to boost your self-esteem and confidence. That feeling of empowerment and accomplishment in one area is going to spill over into all the other areas. That's a good thing, right? It's going to help you manage that stress and avoid that burnout. And you're going to be like, well, I'm more confident now in my job. I'm going to set some more boundaries. Ooh, now I'm less burnout. Or, you know, I'm going to set some boundaries with my partner. And oh, well, now I'm feeling really confident. Like that is going to spill over into other areas. And the same thing. I mean, hopefully if you're, if you're hitting your goals at work, maybe that'll spill over into some other areas too. When I was really burnout, I know I was very toxic. Maybe, maybe you can relate to that toxic feeling where you're just like anything that comes out of your mouth is just blah, right? Like mean and harsh. And I mean, I love a good direct to the point conversation, but I mean, it was like overly direct, you know, there was no friendliness at really in my tone. And when I think about that and the way I used to react in, it was so uncharacteristic, but it became part of my character because I was so burnt out, but because it wasn't really who I was at my core and in my soul, I would beat myself up so bad and be like, how did you react like that? Why did you act like that? There was just a ton of shame around how I was behaving, but I, I couldn't stop myself, if that makes sense. Like I just, it would just come out because I was so burnt out and so done and so overworked So I guess what I'm trying to say is that like me lashing out was a symptom of my burnout, but then I'd be so embarrassed that I would just berate myself and my confidence would tank, my self-esteem, my self-worth would tank. And it was just this like vicious cycle where I kept spiraling downward and I just kept reacting in this crazy way. So if you can get a hold on that, right, and you can... Hit some of those fitness goals, start feeling better, get those better endorphins in your body. You're going to have more self-esteem and more confidence in everything that you do. Now, I said we would come back to time. We would we would mention that because that's probably the elephant in the room, right? Is like, uh, yeah, and I'm fitting in this fitness where, Karen? I'm burnt out. The thing that you think you don't have time for, fitness, is the exact thing that is going to start alleviating your burnout. It's the thing that's going to help you bounce back and ignite your spark. So it's not a matter of like, how do I fit it in? It's like, you must fit it in. It it is a requirement. It is an ingredient, right? It's like baking a cake without sugar or without flour or whatever, right? Like, you're missing a key ingredient. Same thing. If you want to get to a healthy, harmonious life, 
The only way to do that is to have this element of fitness and get rid of your burnout. Okay. And we just gave you five reasons for why, made the case for why having fitness in your life is going to help you with burnout. You know, I love to issue you a challenge. So if you're up for it, here's today's challenge. How can you incorporate more fitness into your calendar? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to move around? Who needs to step up and help out? Who do you need to delegate something to? How can you incorporate more fitness into your schedule? That's the first piece. The second piece, what are you going to commit to? What kind of fitness would excite you? What do you want to have in your calendar? Find some times to fit that in. And when are you going to commit to actually doing it? And don't tell me next month. Don't wait. Start ASAP, like this weekend, aka now. Get off the podcast and go get some exercise. Like, don't wait. That's what we do. We try to plan too much. We try to put things off, but it's just our brain's way of making excuses to not fit it in. So don't do that. Make sure you get it into the calendar and commit to it right away. I know you're up for the challenge. I know you can do this. All right, just as a quick recap, the five ways that fitness is gonna help you bounce back from burnout. Number one, stress reduction. Two, it's gonna improve your sleep quality. Three, it's gonna help you boost those energy levels that you've been lacking. Four, enhanced mental well-being. And number five, it's gonna improve your self-esteem and your confidence. All right, I hope, to see all of you on May 15th for the Banish Burnout webinar. It is not recorded. It is me live. I am going to walk you through the three phases of burnout and show you exactly what you need to do in each one of those phases to help you overcome that specific phase. Go to karenfreeland.com forward slash burnout right now and In addition to what you've been learning in these last few episodes, we're going to build you a custom plan that is specific for you for how you're going to tackle burnout for the next 30 plus days, okay? So I will see you at the webinar. I can't wait. May 15th. Until next time, y'all, stay fabulous. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. And if you want accountability and support, I've got your back. Join my private Facebook group, Successful Working Women Rocking Reinvention today. You'll find a community of like-minded women waiting to support you, exclusive content and helpful resources to ensure you succeed. Lastly, if you loved this episode, do me a favor and be sure to leave a review. Together, we can encourage more women to live their purpose. See you next time.